What's up my friends? Welcome to an all new video. This one being an update now for a video I did a couple weeks back where the Sergeant Major of the Army had some changes to AR-67-1, which is the regulation that covers the uniform, how soldiers are supposed to look, all sorts of things. And he has some changes that are being implemented this year. So that's what we want to talk about. Of course, based on the demographic of my channel and the majority of you being probably men that are watching this video, there's an obvious question that you want to know the answer to. So I feel like we should probably start off with that question. And to best cover that, I'm just going to show you this clip from the actual Facebook uh, live stream that they did that kind of talked about the changes. You know, you know what's coming. You know it was inevitable. Every man in the army wants to know, are we getting the beard? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, we're not. Um, that's not one of those things we looked at. And, um, and uh, I am a man in the army, so I may disagree that every man in the army wants a beard. So, um, no, uh, we're not looking at it. But there's already a, an exception to policy for those that have issues with shaving. There's already a uh, profile uh, that you can get. Um, and you can have a beard. There's also religious accommodations, and I'll let uh, Sergeant Major Clark or Sergeant Major Sanders jump in if I miss anything. But there, there is way, but uh, we had not reviewed it, and it was not on the docket, so right now you will not have a beard. So there you go. Bummer. Yes, I know. Views on the demographics are probably dropping way down right now as people are probably abandoning the video, but we're gonna talk about some of those changes that they do cover in that Facebook Live that happened on today as we're recording this video, which today is what? The 26th of January. So this is when this stream took place and they talked about the changes was the 26th of January. The changes that we're gonna talk about do not take effect until 30 days. That gives leaders time to review them, to understand them better, to be educated on these changes before they go into effect. So that means late February is when these will actually take effect. So all these changes I've talked about do not take effect immediately right now. So if you're falling into the category of these changes applying to you, it doesn't mean you can actually do them right now unless you're watching this in the future after they have taken effect. So why the changes? Well, some of it is for health reasons. Some of it is for morale reasons. Some of it is just because, you know, people wanted it, right? The Sergeant Major of the Army, you know, put together a panel and they reviewed things that soldiers want. And some of the stuff didn't make sense of why we should prevent them from doing this this way. It didn't change anything. It didn't affect their combat readiness or anything like that. So why not? If it improves morale a little bit, maybe retain soldiers longer, then why not make these changes? Some of the changes are related to that. Some are just updating things. Some of it is just changing with the times. So we are going to talk about them. The majority of the changes do apply to the female soldiers. So yes, men, there's not a whole lot of changes for you. So since the demographic of this channel is mainly men, I am gonna start off with the ones that do affect both male and female soldiers, and then we'll get into some of the other changes that pretty much just affect the female soldiers. For those of you who wanna know about it, maybe you're a female yourself, whatever the case is. The first one that affects both male and female soldiers is that you're allowed to have highlights now. There is some requirements to go along with that. That means that they have to be a natural hair color. The also kind of change related to that is that it doesn't have to be a natural hair color to you, but it has to be a normal natural hair color. So for example, you can't have blue highlights, you know, neon pink highlights, none of that kind of stuff. It has to be a natural hair color. The main thing with that being a, a natural hair color just in general, not necessarily a natural hair color to you, is that women of color, right? They always had an issue with, they weren't allowed to maybe go blonde because that wasn't a natural hair color to that ethnicity. That also is no longer the case now. Now it doesn't matter as long as it is a natural, normal human hair color normal human hair color isn't blue or bright pink or anything like that. So if a Asian, a black woman, whatever, wants to dye the hair blonde, then essentially they can from what I'm kind of understanding from it. But mainly we're talking about the highlights, right? So they didn't officially say that, you know, that applied in general for dyeing your hair. They mainly just talked about the highlights kind of part of it as that is a new thing. And you can have highlights as long as they're not too wild and crazy, but they have to be a natural hair color. So both men and women are allowed to have highlights now. Well, actually, as I'm making this video 30 days from now, but you get what I'm saying. The other thing that applies to both male and female soldiers is their fingernail polish. So for females, you can have fingernail polish, you know, that goes a little bit different than what it used to be. Before, you could only have really clear colored ones. Now, they've kind of relaxed a little bit on that to where it will allow them to have different kind of shades kind of tied into that. They also talked about lipstick as well. So 
lipstick for the female soldiers for that one. For females also, the kind of different shades now that they'll allow of fingernail polish. What specific colors you can do, they didn't really outline it during that. They said that it'll probably come a little bit more with more specifics when they have the official document that comes out. Um, but they're saying that, you know, you still can't do like the extreme colors. You can't do anything like gold or blue or, or anything, you know, bright pink or whatever kind of a thing. So they kind of what they made it sound like is maybe like some kind of flesh tone type of colors. So maybe I have like a tan or certain other kind of shades of nail polish that the females would be able to have. But then you're probably wondering, well, what about the males? Well, males can't do colored fingernails, but the new thing that they're allowing to do is they are allowing males to have clear fingernail polish. I didn't know this was a thing, but apparently, you know, some men like to have clear uh, fingernail polish because it protects their nails, like if they're working with chemicals or certain other types of environments. But I, I was not aware of this, but this is a new thing that will allow male soldiers to be able to have clear fingernail polish if they wish to do so. Now, if this is the type of content you're interested in, you want to learn about the Army, you want to learn about changes, you want to learn about whatever that maybe fills your curiosity about the Army, maybe think about hitting that subscribe button. Also click on that bell so you get alerts as soon as new videos go live to include the live streams and become a part of that awesome notification platoon. So let's drive on with some more information. So the rest of these changes are geared towards female soldiers. They even addressed it in there that, you know, people are asking like on Facebook, you know, some questions, you know, in the live chat and saying that, hey, these are a lot of changes for the females. What about for the men? And they mentioned in there that just a lot of the changes that people were requesting for mainly just applied to the women. So that simply just ended up being what was mainly covered by that panel and what kind of got, you know, voted on for changing or not changing. Now, some of these were kind of theories that were in that previous video that I had, but I'm still gonna cover them as they are now kind of official things, one of them being earrings. So yes, earrings will be allowed in the Army combat uniform, the camouflage uniform. So females will be allowed to wear like stud earrings, just small ones, nothing like crazy, any hoops or dangling earrings, but just regular studs will be allowed in the Army combat uniform, but they do still have some restrictions. Restrictions being no pearl earrings, right? You can have pearl earrings, I guess, in the Army service uniform, which is the dress uniform, but not in the combat uniform. Also, the restrictions apply to being in the field and being in a combat zone or in a deployment. So basically, if you're stationed stateside, you're stationed overseas, and you're in garrison is what it's called, not actually on a deployment, not actually in the field, then females can wear earrings while in the Army combat uniform. Some of this is done for morale purposes. Some of it is just because females feel like a lot of the restrictions are like gender neutral and they still want to feel like a female while in uniform. So this kind of, re you know, reduces some of the restraints and allows them to maybe feel more like a female. These obviously are not required. It's based on if a female would like to, so they have to remain within that regulation of simple type of earring studs or something like that. But there also is some commander's discretion involved with it based on if it could pose some kind of like uh, hazard or something. So if the commander feels that the females, maybe with the job they do or whatever, could you know potentially have some kind of hazard by wearing earrings, then they can still kind of revoke that uh, ability to be able to do so. Another change comes from the hair standards for female, removing the minimum length standard. In AR 670-1, it states that females have to maintain a certain amount of length on the top of their head. I think it was like half an inch or maybe it was less than that. I don't remember the exact you know, measurement, but they had a minimum length where men did not. So it removes that. So both men and women, if they would like to shave their heads, then they're free to do so, where the previous regulation was basically out of regs if a female did shave their head. Also continuing with some hair regulations for the females, they're now allowed to have ponytails. So they've already relaxed previously in the physical fitness uniform to where females were allowed to have long ponytails. They didn't have to, you know, tie up their hair into a bun for physical fitness just to make it a little easier while they're working out, while they're doing PT, on these runs, whatever the case was. And they'd have long ponytails hanging down. Now, they are not allowed to have long ponytails technically in uniform while they're in the army combat uniform there is kind of a little bit of a restriction with that that you kind of can i'll talk about that in a little bit too but they are allowed to have like short ponytails the main reason for this is they found studies where some women certain types of hair you know it was bad for them to have their hair in some kind of tight bun because it pulled on it caused baldness causes all sorts of other things so they want to allow those females to have some type of ponytail to kind of get around that that also helps with females that maybe are transitioning from having shorter hair to longer hair, and their hair is not long enough to really be able to do inside of a bun, so they had to do all sorts of crazy stuff to kind of keep it penned up or whatever, so it allows them to have like a short ponytail. The only type of kind of long ponytail that a female can have while in uniform is when wearing the helmet. They say that if, 
you know, you have long hair and it's too difficult to put it in some type of ponytail or bun or whatever that would, you know, allow you to easily be able to wear like the helmet without it pushing down on you or interfering with the headgear, then you can put that, you know, ponytail into a long one style one or a braid or whatever and tuck it into the army combat uniform like in the back. So you tuck the ponytail in and then the Kevlar helmet or the helmet that they're wearing is not being interfered with. So maybe it's not pushing down when they're on the range, especially like for females that wear like the flight helmet because that one's more, you know, solid type of thing. So it's a little bit more, you know, difficult to wear like a bun, especially with that type of helmet. So they can have like a braided uh, ponytail or a long ponytail and tuck it into their ACU or army combat uniform. So that way it's not showing and then easily be able to wear the helmet. They can't have the ponytail just out. So if they are gonna have a ponytail, it has to be a short ponytail. Now, those were some of the main kind of changes. There were some other things like changing a few acronyms here and there, changing some wording, updating some of the images that are inside of like the manual to be more updated and a little bit more, you know, better explaining the standards of how the hair should be or how the uniform should be. But there was a couple of main highlights that came from questions after they kind of reviewed everything that was changing. So I'll highlight just the main two ones that may apply to some people they want to know about. One of them being that the Sergeant Major of the Army mentioned that there is a ACFT or Armory Combat Fitness Test 3.0. We already saw that there was a 2.0. That made it to where they had an alternate event so that if uh, individuals couldn't do the leg tucks, then they had the option to do a plank. He did not want to go into the specifics of what 3.0 included, so I'm not too sure what they are. Maybe we're going to find that out in the coming months or whatever, but he did state that there is a 3.0 that they have kind of outlined and they are still on track to kind of make the new Army Combat Fitness Test be the new standard once again, even though they kind of started, sort of did that back in October, but actually making it take effect uh, to be a thing of record coming March of 2022. The other thing he kind of talked about briefly was related to a new policy. The president had signed in a executive order to now allow transgender individuals to join the military. So the question that came from Facebook was that people wanted to know how do these regulations kind of affect those individuals that possibly may come into the military or in the army in this case, being transgender. Right now, the standards really just apply to male or female, don't apply to transgender in any kind of wording to kind of describe how they kind of maintain the standards for those individuals. But they did mention that they are working on changes. It's a very new thing. So not a lot of information really on that, but that was a question that was asked because there might be someone watching this video that may be curious, how do these standards apply for an individual that's transgender? As I'm mentioning, you know, this is the standard for males, this is the standard for females. And you may be curious, what about for transgender? They address that, it's still kind of in the works since it is very new and they are working on how they will kind of address that with the new standards. Now, if you want to continue reviewing experience and watching some more videos from me, I got a great video right here of me putting on the army uniform for the first time in a very long time. So you can see how that kind of went. Also, my latest video upload right there available for you. Links in the description box. So check out the description box down below. Hit that thumbs up. I'm Christopher Chaos. I'll see you next time. See ya.